This here is an RV surge protector. It can be vitally important to the RV electrical system, but not all of them are the same. And even if you spent a little or a lot, you may not be as protected as you think you might be. Look at, look at that. Even with multiple surge protectors, we're still getting dangerous voltage on the RV. So today we're gonna dig into the truth and, and dispel some of the misconceptions that are out there. So let's get started. Now to start off, the first misconception that we wanted to spell is that if you have a surge protector, you're good from surges, which it is a surge protector and it will protect you from some surges, but not all surges. So oftentimes you have this kind of false sense of security thinking that even if lightning were to strike, I'm still covered because I have a surge protector. When it comes to lightning and a direct hit, lightning has its own rules. It can pretty much do what it wants. There's not much protection that you can have from direct hit from lightning, but having this is gonna help you from the typical surges that you're gonna see in a power system. Now, here's the second misconception. You don't have to look far to see on social media where somebody has a surge protector like this and it's just completely overheated and blown out on the plug. And oftentimes you'll see things like, oh, the surge protector did its job, it protected your RV, or I have a faulty surge protector. I will say there are lots of reasons why that can happen, but if there was preventative maintenance, the vast majority of these wouldn't be happening. So usually that's gonna be caused by a lot of corrosion or a weak connection, loose connection in here. When you have a, a weak connection and you have a decent amount of amperage going through there, you're gonna get a lot of heat and that is going to burn up. So this is really simple. I use the deoxit, I use it to clean both ends of the surge protector, I use it to clean our power cable going to the RV, because this can really happen at any point that you're having a connection that, that's getting loose and or corroded. Corrosion is one of those, those biggest things that is going to be creating this. It's why I've stopped using this one out here. It gives me one less point of maintenance. So now we just plug it into the pedestal and have the onboard one. I'll, I will explain why we actually travel with three of them and what I would do different. But with having the onboard one and this one being exposed to so much weather, it was easier just to not use this for typical use. So if you find a burnt end on your surge protector or plug, uh, ask yourself the question, when was the last time that I did preventative maintenance on that? Because the burnt end on there is not the surge protection portion of the surge protector. That's, that's actually internally. Now, while they all don't have the same protection, some have more than others, usually when I'm looking at a surge protector, I like the power watchdog because you can replace the surge module inside. Usually when it takes a surge, it's sacrificial. It's not gonna be able to work again. You either have to replace it, send it in to get it repaired, but Power Watchdog makes it to where you can just get a replacement surge module and you can open this up and swap it out. I actually do keep one of these on hand, so even if we have a power surge, we're not gonna be down for long. I just need to swap it out and we're back up and running. I think it's brilliant. They spend less time replacing modules and you spend less time down without a surge protector. Sounds like a win-win. Now, I know what this sounds like. This isn't sponsored by Power Watchdog. We've bought our equipment and we've had it for years, but it is sponsored by eTrailer. So if you're looking for RV gear like the Power Watchdog, they're worth checking out. Because something that sets them apart is they have a hundred US-based representatives ready to take your call or chat. So if you have a question, you can get on there and actually speak to somebody about the question that you have. Couple that with the wide range of things that they carry makes it a winning combination. eTrailer is a great resource for RVers. Thank you each other for sponsoring this video, helping getting this information out about surge protectors. Now the next misconception is the amount of protection that you think you might be getting from your surge protector that you may not be fully covered. And this is gonna be multi-layered because if you have a typical surge protector like this, this gives you data when you're plugging in the RV or connecting into that circuit. It's gonna tell you if it's safe to connect the RV to it with these indicator lights, but then it's gonna have the surge protection on there but it's not doing everything that it could be to protect your RV. And so a lot of people will step up to the EPO or an EMS. So this one is the EPO and it will shut down power if it sees a problem. Any of these things that are on here where it's miswired or if there's low voltage or if you lose the neutral connection on your RV, it's gonna shut the power down, protect you from any of those dangerous situations so you can get that corrected. 
So people that have just a surge protector might think they're completely protected, but this will not actively shut down power if there is a problem. It's up to you to see the indicator lights and then disconnect it and make sure that somebody comes and, and fixes the electrical before you plug your RV back into it. Compared to this one is actively looking for those problems and will shut down immediately when it finds those problems. And one thing that this does that this does not is it looks for the high and low voltage. And the, the low voltage is something that we have seen at RV parks. It's probably the most that it's protected us from. It's really important for things like ACs on the RV. The, the low voltage is, is really bad for those. Now we do have Bluetooth on both of these models so we can plug this in, connect in and see what the voltage is and decide if we wanna connect to it or, or if the voltage is too low to where we need to do something else. But the thing about low voltage, voltage can change in the park. So oftentimes when it gets hot in the middle of summer and everybody's turning on their ACs or multiple ACs and there's more power draw, that voltage can drop and it can get to a level that you should not be running your AC on that low of voltage. So we do have one more surge protector that will actually boost the voltage. So this will disconnect the voltage if it gets too low. This will actually boost the voltage if it gets too low. So I think it boosts it 10% if the voltage is low. Now, usually you buy the version that matches your RV. So if you have a 30 amp RV, you buy a 30 amp version. If you have a 50 amp RV, you buy a 50 amp version. We have the 30 amp version and a 50 amp RV. That's because we had this before when we had a 30 amp RV and I didn't wanna spend more money by getting a new one. And it, it works great for us because we have the inverter set up on here. If we're able to plug into 30 amps, we can power just about anything that we need inside the RV. So for me, I was going for more quality rather than quantity. We're not getting as much power as we can inside the RV using this, we're somewhat limited, but at the same time, we're getting a quality power, a boosted voltage in a low voltage situation when we use this. We've only had to use it a handful of times, but thankful that we had it when we needed it. But with all this protection with this and the EPO, you can still have a problem that gets through. So there's a condition called the hot skin that can get by these surge protectors. And it's basically voltage that's been applied to the frame of your RV. So when you go to touch a piece of metal, you'll feel that electricity, you'll, you'll get shocked from it. It's never normal to get shocked by your RV. The best case scenario is to unplug it at that point and figure out what's going on. The problem with hot skin is it's not just one culprit that you always have to check. It could be a problem with the wire. It could be a problem with the, the RV park. It could be a problem with an RV down the chain. It could be a problem with your RV. So you have to be able to track this down and figure out where the problem is. So for these situations, I, I keep a little tool. It's a non-contact voltage detector. So this isn't the end all be all, but it's a great indicator to, to see if you fix the problem. So rather than touching the RV over and over again, turn this on and it'll detect if there's voltage there. So this is pretty simple. You just turn it on, you get close, and you can tell that we're having voltage on the RV. So then you tell the park or wherever you're at, let's try and fix this situation. And then as you try and troubleshoot it and check things, come back and check for voltage. So this is our first indication that we, we probably fixed that problem. But this is something that can get through the surge protectors that not all RVers know about. As a side note, we did replace an EMS that we had on board for the power watchdog because it did let a reverse polarity through once that the power watchdog caught when we were just using the surge protector. So it did make us want to switch over to the EPO because it seemed to catch a little bit more. Now, my preferred setup, because I mentioned we have three surge protectors, you don't need three surge protectors, but my preferred method is having the onboard one. I like the power watchdog, it does a great job. I like having it hardwired on the RV. I have no problem with the ones that plug in outside, you just have a little bit more maintenance. The hardwired one, they're so simple once you already have it installed. I also like having the auto former on hand for those low voltage situations to, to bring in that quality power to the RV. So those are kind of my two standbys. And then we have that third surge protector. It's the surge protector and a circuit analyzer to give you that information. I call that my thousand trail site finder because I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're trying to pick out a site and not all the places have properly wired power at the pedestals. I use that before we disconnect and try and hook everything up with the RV to see if that site is wired properly and good on power. So I would forego that surge protector if you wanted to have something like that that's handheld that you can just plug in quickly. They do have little units that are just real easy to keep on hand to be able to test the power at those sites. But to me, that's optional to have that. I do like having a non-contact voltage detector. I think these are great to have on hand. I also have a multimeter so I can check and diagnose things. So with that combination, I feel like we can go to any electrical situation and find a solution if there is a problem. 
Another important thing that should be mentioned is when you're connecting your RV to power, you should have the breaker turned off. If you're using portable protection, then you plug that in, then turn the breaker on, check the circuit analyzer. If all is good, turn the breaker off, plug in your RV, and then turn that breaker back on. That's best practices. If yours is hardwired, just have the breaker off, plug in your RV, turn on the breaker, and you're done. It's pretty simple. But understanding your equipment, because sometimes when you look at these things, you'll see total or complete protection for your RV electrical system. And that's not always 100% true. There are things that can go wrong and can get through even if you have protection for your RV. But I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it helped you out in some way, knowing more about the equipment on your RV. So as always, if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video. Take care.